This story happened in the forest, when Janati came to pick mushrooms. Peering out from under the hood of his car, he looked around. He was only a short distance from his destination, despite the fact that the domestic auto industry turned out to be unreliable. What a trip, he sighed. It's okay, we'll patch you up, he said, trying to start his old car. But what splendor is here, he thought, looking around the surroundings. In the distance, one could hear the sound of a mountain river shimmering in its clear waters, and all around, dense trees rose to the skies. Some had already dressed in bright autumn clothes, showing off their beauty. Here, the air was a real healer, especially for city dwellers accustomed to smoke and smog. Despite the troubles with the car, Gennady was in high spirits. He knew he could handle the repair, just like he always did. In addition, the purpose of the trip awaited him, mushroom hunting. He loved milk mushrooms marinated with sour cream and fried potatoes. This pleasure was worth the walk through the forest. Thinking like this, Gina stuck his head out from under the hood and suddenly became numb. An imposing brown bear stood in front of him, staring at him intently. The man hastily retreated, trying with all his might to come up with a rescue plan. There was no use in running from the bear, that was clear. Play dead? But it might not work because the beast saw him alive. He did not have enough courage for such a desperate act. Thought after thought about salvation flashed through Gina's mind, but in the end, he decided to run to the river and pushing off from the shore, plunged into the cold waters of the mountain river. The cold of the water was scalding and Gina, having climbed to the surface, took in a deep breath of air. However, the current was strong and he could not get ashore. The worst thing was when he turned around and saw that the bear was following him. Gina's eyes widened in fear. His chances of survival seemed minimal. If he didn't drown, the bear would eat him. No solutions appeared in his head. After hitting a rock at the next bend in the river, he lost consciousness. Having come to his senses, he found himself on the shore. Startling himself, he tried to calm his breathing. Water flowed from his clothes. So, this is not a dream. But how did he end up on the shore? Gina looked up and saw the answer to his question. The same bear stood nearby, looking at him carefully. What do you want from me? Gina shouted loudly, realizing that the bear could have killed him. But for some reason, it didn't. The bear responded with a growl, stretching its neck and showing its fangs. Suddenly, the beast turned and slowly walked into the forest, leaving Gennady in bewilderment. Only then did Gennady notice that the bear's neck was clamped in a rusty wire that had cut deep into the skin. That's how it is, Gina exclaimed in amazement. How could I not have guessed that you were asking for help, he whispered under his breath. Most likely, the bear was caught in a wire trap months earlier. However, the narrow noose remained around his neck. Over time, growing and gaining weight, the bear felt it cutting deeper into his flesh, causing pain. You're my poor fellow. Now Gennady tried to calm the bear so that it would not decide to attack him. How effective this method was is unknown, but the beast waited patiently for the man to find a way to help him. Gina felt in his pockets for the tool he usually used to repair the car. Pliers. He hesitated for a long time before deciding to approach the bear. But, gathering his courage and prayerfully asking for good luck, he approached the animal. The wire was tied so tightly around the bear's neck that Gennady had to make every effort to get the pliers under it. Finally, a click was heard, and the metal shackles broke into two parts, freeing the animal's powerful neck. The bear seemed to immediately feel relieved, growling deeply. Gina retreated a couple of steps, watching the actions of the beast, and the bear looked at him, stretching his muzzle up, and rushed into the forest thicket. Sinking to the ground, Gina sighed. This is how you go for mushrooms, he said, hardly believing what was happening. A year had passed since this unusual meeting. Gennady sometimes remembered it, but now these memories seemed more funny than scary. Perhaps this is how human memory works, sweetening dangerous moments to maintain mental health. In any case, Gennady never lost his passion for forest walks. Gina walked through the forest, holding in his hands a basket filled with freshly picked porcini mushrooms. He looked around, trying to navigate the expanses of the forest, when suddenly his gaze fell on small, evil eyes that were staring at him from the bushes. Boar! Jaina, 
immediately understood, realizing that he had stumbled upon the boar's path. Quickly putting the basket aside, Gina, without waiting for the attack, deftly climbed the nearest tree. Try to get to me, he shouted from the branch, confident in his safety. The boar, in turn, emerged from the ambush and, raising its blunt muzzle, began to inspect the situation. He seemed to have no intention of leaving and decided to wait for Gina. Sometimes the boar seemed to forget about his opponent, walking around the tree and picking at the soil in search of food. However, as soon as Gina made the slightest noise, the animal immediately returned to the tree, making impatient sounds. Gina's body began to go numb from being in one position for a long time. How much longer could he hold out like this? And the sun was already setting below the horizon. What do you need from me? He shouted to the boar in despair. Leave me alone! The boar looked attentively at the man, lifting his muzzle up, but showed no signs of leaving. Gina looked at the beast in despair. Then the figure of a huge bear appeared from behind the bushes. The boar, trying to protect its territory, tilted its muzzle to the ground, but the bear roared loudly and rushed at him. Seeing this, the boar retreated, breaking branches in its path. The bear walked around the tree, making sure that the enemy had left, then raised its muzzle and growled calmly. Gina realized that this was the same bear that he had once helped. The bear once again circled the tree and disappeared into the thicket of the forest. After waiting a little, Gina carefully descended to the ground. He was shocked by what happened and thought about how animals are able to respond kindly to kindness. Dear friends, if you like the video, don't forget to like it and also subscribe to our channel where you will find a lot more interesting things. Don't forget to click on the bell and leave a comment.